Welcome to Last in Line Podcast, where we are highlighting, showcasing, and spotlighting great leaders of faith who have overcome adversity, cultivated resilience, and served others in a significant capacity. So settle in and be encouraged by this episode of Last in Line Podcast. What is the secret to parenting? What is the secret to raising strong kids who are contributing members to society? What is the secret to loving graciously, being patient, but also holding to a high standard and setting disciplined behavior and creating uh discipline in the home what is all of that what how do we do that what's the secret sauce to that well i'm glad you asked because you are not the only one that wants to know uh i am honored to say that my oldest son uh got married last week and he and his bride have been uh together for five years i guess and she's become part of the family before she was ever part of the family, um, like a daughter uh, from day one, really. And uh, I, at the wedding, a lot of things become clear to you about some of the things you did, some of the things you didn't do, some of the ways you handled certain situations, some of the byproducts and the fruit from your parenting. Uh, and I, I, my wife and I, I think, would agree for the most part, what we saw was very pleasing. What we've seen as the finished product, which really is never a finished product, but uh, when you send them off with a spouse and they're on their own starting a life, you kind of are a little bit done to the degree that you were a parent. You're transitioning into a different stage of parenting. Uh, more friends now and uh I guess guidance, resources, um, people of wisdom, suppo supposedly, right? Uh, hopefully, but the role of parenting that we had taken to that point had really has changed gradually over the last three or four years. But once it, there's almost this finality and and uh, uh, imminence of once they get married, it's just kind of a different. It looks different. But I had a lot of people. I mean, it's it's really cool whenever you're in a room full of people that love your kid and they're there to honor and celebrate your kid on most likely the best day of their life. And they um you soak it up. You you try to make sure to soak it up. And it's a whirlwind. The kids are, you know, it's been planning for 10 to 12 months in in this engagement season and my wife has done an amazing job. She's done a lot of the heavy lifting. A lot of this would not have happened without her. But you start all that, you know, is compiled and, and all of that kind of comes to a head. And, and the culmination of all of that is the wedding. And so <clears throat> it's fun to watch, but it's also a whirlwind. It's also your head spinning like everything's happening all at once in double time, right? The, uh, just the magnitude of everything is real. And it's almost like a guy that's like a, you know, he goes into the professional sports and he's been in the, he's been in college, but then he goes in the pro game and everything's faster, right? He feels like he's moving slower. He can't catch up to the game. Well, that's what it feels like when your kid's getting married and you're at a wedding and all these people you want to talk to, all this stuff happening, got to cut the cake, got to make the toast, got to do the first dance, got to do this, got to do that. Uh, and it was really, our head was spinning for a minute, but then everything kind of settled and you start talking to people and people, more and more people come up and they say, wow, you did a great job with him. You know, how did you, how was, you know, what is your secret to parenting? Like secret, right? It's not a secret. Um, everything about parenting we need to know is in the Bible. And, uh, most likely you've seen good examples in your life about, around parenting. So take notes mentally. Um, but I had a couple of people specifically come up and say, man, I'm just glad that he's my friend, like kids, their age that are married. You know, I'm glad that they can be 
are friends and we can be married couples together. And man, you did a great job with all of your kids. Like all four of them are just amazing people who serve with hearts of humility and they just love life. And so people would come up and, and ask, you know, what, what advice do you have for me before I'm a parent? Right. But I'll be a parent at some point. These younger kids are asking, what's your advice? What's the secret? What's the magic pill that we can, you know, swallow and be good parents. And, and there's not one, as you know, and, and I mean, that's a humbling question. And so I thought about it and my answer really to them was, you know, my first order of business in parenting is teach them to love God, teach them why they need to love God and how to love God, and then concentrate on building people of integrity and character who know how to serve other people. If you can do that, that that is really in a nutshell what building good human beings looks like from a parenting standpoint. So tonight, I'm going to give you three parenting hacks for building quality humans. And it's not something that I've created. It's not a wheel that I've invented. It's not my own patented recipe for parenting, right? It's literally in the Bible. It's things I watched my parents do, things I watched them not do, do not do certain things that I did watch them do. Same thing my kids are going to do, right? They're going to take the good from me and my wife, and then they're going to put their spin on it, put their style on it, put their swag on it, and then they're going to run it the way they want to run it. Um, which is all what I hope most parents do. They take the good from people they've seen, mentors, leaders that they know, and mostly from the best father in the world, their Savior Christ, Jesus Christ, and, and God the Father. And so that was my answer, really, in a nutshell. Um, now that I've had time to really think about it, I was able to put it into a, what seems to be well-articulated verbiage for you. But in the moment, that's pretty much what I said. Like, I don't have all the answers. I'm still learning. I didn't do everything right. You know, that that's a typical answer that we should give. But teach them how and why to love God and have a Christian worldview, follower of Jesus, and then teach them and train them on how to have character, impeccable integrity that's unwavering, unshakable, standards that they stand on, that they are about, that they stand for, and then how they can serve other people. You show me, somebody argue with me about that. If you you can show me a kid that's had all that done for them and they still turned out as negative, evil, uh, antagonists in the world, I will be shocked and I will... I really and truly will uh, not believe you because that just does not seem possible. So that's it. Full quiver tonight. Guys, I'm calling this episode Full Quiver, Three Parenting Hacks for Building Quality Humans. And I take it right out of Scripture. I'm not a hunter, but if you are and you're listening, you know what a quiver is. Arrows go in the quiver, correct? Keep them organized. Keep them uh, structured. Keep them safe, I guess, and protected. Um, but here you go. Here's where I got that from. Right out of Psalm 127, okay, verse 3 through 5, children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from Him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in court. Uh, in court, obviously, is for the time that that was written in. That was a big deal. Um, but you guys can apply that to today. So blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They're like arrows in the hands of a warrior. Okay, Children are a heritage of, from the Lord. So we are to steward that. We are to guard that. We are to protect for protect it and provide for it them um and and that's really where this full quiver comes from and in proverbs 22 6 train up a child in the way they should go 
when he is old, he will not depart from it, right? So for those of you who may have a delayed harvest in what they're seeing from their child, maybe their reward hasn't come yet. Maybe the harvest isn't quite plentiful. Maybe you've sowed great seeds, you've done the right things, but your kid is wayward. They've kind of prodigal son to this deal and swan dove into a life of sin, a life away from God, a life away from everything you built as a standard for their character. But take heart, they're coming back, guys. The prodigal came back, your kid's coming back. Um, you know, my kids aren't perfect. And look, God's children aren't either. It doesn't make him a bad father. So you didn't necessarily do anything wrong if your kids turn out kind of rotten fruit right now. That's temporary. Keep praying for them. Keep doing what you do. Keep loving them. Have grace, but also hold them accountable and speak truth and love and always give them a safe place to come back to. And I promise you, they will come back. So train up a child. And, and then when they're old, they won't depart from it. Okay. So build those foundational principles in them early. Um, so that's what I want to do. Like parenting, I wanted to I wanted to say, you know, to the guy that asked me, what what's my advice? What's my advice for parenting? What what's the secret sauce for this? Like you've obviously done it well. There's fruit everywhere, ripe, juicy fruit that are your children and how they serve and what they do and just the byproducts of their life and what how they show up. Like there's good fruit there. That's not all me. That's not all my wife. God's grace has been all over this family. We've done things wrong. My wife and I have had moments where we may or may not have been stayed together, right? This could have been a broken home just as easily as it wasn't. And somehow we stuck in it and somehow we took our vows seriously. And somehow God swooped in and rescued us from ourselves and took care of our children in the process and then equipped us to equip them. And that is, I'm forever grateful. I will, you know, never, ever forget that. I, I will, it will never be lost on me how God saved my marriage, how God has saved my children. And, you know, they're not a finished product either. None of us are. But, man, I like where they are for the stage of life they're in. 100% love it. And, and I have no one to thank but God for that. And, and just our obedience, I guess, in, in getting them in church and getting them around good people. Christian people and us doing the same thing for us and building ourselves spiritually like that. We had to take ownership of that. That was on us, right? It didn't just magically happen. So yeah, we did do some things right. And, you know, great, good on us, but that was our job. So let's not get a badge of honor for something we should have been doing. Um, but yeah, thank you is all I wanted to say to that guy. But what I wanted to say is it's, I know what it's not. I know what par good parenting is not. I know what my kids turned out really good, and they're still turning out really good day by day, every day, and they sky's the limit. Best days are in front of them, right? You haven't seen the best from my kids yet, and what you've seen is really good so far. So I'm encouraged. I'm hopeful for what God has for their futures um, and what he's doing in their life right now. But what I know it's not, for those of you listening that, think you've got the the bull by the horns and the world by the balls from a parenting standpoint. And you know, like, here's what it is. Let me tell you what it's not. Okay. It's not that your kid and, and look, nothing wrong with what I'm about to say. So don't start going, you know, ballistic on, Oh, well, he's knocking this. He's knocking that. No. Cause I was you, I was this. I had this viewpoint at one point, nothing wrong with the viewpoint, but it just can't be your God. It can't be your idol. It can't be the only end all be all way of parenting. So please, when I list these three things that parenting is not, I have nothing against these things. They're all good things. But if we get laser focused and we make parenting about these things, these rewards, these accomplishments, these tangible uh gauges of the success of our child we're missing a bigger pic a bigger picture so what it's not is it's not just so you can make sure that they get a d1 scholarship athletically okay they go to play a sport at a big school or they go 
they get a hundred percent scholarship to play a sport somewhere. Like it's not all about athletics. It's not all about how much of a superstar they are at a sport. It's not that you demand straight A's. Granted, you know, if their potential is straight A's, then yes, they need to work for that and they need to do as best they can. And straight A's are great. That will help them. That just proves that they were able to be disciplined, stick it out, and live up to their potential and, and develop some some good habits. But that's not all it's about. Good parenting isn't – I'm a good parent because my kids all made straight A's. That's that's not it. That's not why I was a good parent. That's their thing. That's what they did. They can be proud of that. And it's not about ensuring that they all run in the popular circles. It's not about popularity contest. I mean, if your kids go to public schools, private schools, I mean, there's a social dynamic that's very real. I had two that did. I had two that didn't. Two were homeschooled. My last two and my first two went to public school. They were, well, my oldest was in the absolute inner circle, the popularity circle. And, you know, we, there were some ramifications from that down the road. Um, it had, it left its mark on him. There were some scars, you know, some wounds there. We got through them, but popularity isn't all it's cracked up to be. And, you know, the two younger ones that went through that are homeschooled, they, they're still pretty popular at church and with some of their homeschool groups, but it's not, it doesn't look the same. That's not what their identity is wrapped up in. So I guess my point is what parenting is not is wrapping up your kid's identity in some of those worldly accomplishments and the trophies and the awards and this, this, and this. like, there's nothing wrong with those. Yes. We should all strive for excellence. We all want to be great because that's a better witness for the kingdom. If we give God the glory, that's, that's a better story. That's a better testimony, but that's not all it is. And parenting isn't just shoving those kids in those directions where they have so many things up on the wall that tell you how great they were. Okay. That's, that was my, that's my soapbox there. And that's, so it was easier for me to think of what great parenting is not because I kind of teetered on the line. I kind of went back and forth on the line of being that guy that stressed the athletics, stressed, demanded straight A's. Like we were all about appearances and popularity and, you know, uh, so nothing wrong with some of that stuff, but again, that's not what makes us good parents. That's not why my kids have turned out to be good people um, and are still becoming good people, by the way. I'll keep saying that. That's going to be a continuing caveat to this episode. But um, again, I go back to my answer to you. And if if anyone ever asks you, you know, you've got good kids, I'm guessing. And let's say they want to know what's the secret. How, what's your advice? Man, I go back to this. What I just said earlier, you teach your kids why and how to love God, the creator of everything. You, you build integrity and character. You start there, and then you teach them how to serve others. That's where it's at. That's the sauce. That's the recipe. Uh, Proverbs 13, 24 says, Whoever spares the rod hates his son, but he who loves him is diligent to discipline him. That is... Um, going to be one of our bullet points tonight. And I might go a little longer than I thought. I kind of went a little bit on a rant there. Um, but so let me get into it here. Um, I got three things for you. Okay. I'm going to tee it up for you tonight. Literally. I've got three T's, three parenting hacks. Okay. First one's teach. Okay. We're going verbal. So teach them. Okay. To love Christ and how to love a spouse. You teach them. Okay, you show them and you teach them that. So verbally, we're teaching how to love Christ, what that looks like, why that's important. Okay, that's very simple to tell them why it's important, but it's another thing to instill those standards and principles within them. Okay, discipline, structure, habits, you teach those things. Okay, we're teaching structure, we're teaching habits, discipline. Like my kids growing up knew that that, Spare the rod didn't exist in our house. You got your butt tore up if you disrespect my wife for sure. But being blatantly disobedient got your butt tore up a little bit too. Okay. Um, so that, you know, discipline's huge. It's, uh, it creates, I guess, those guardrails and those boundaries that are healthy, that kids will resist, but ultimately they will serve them down the road. And I've got, 
the fruit from that living proof. My kids are very well behaved. They're not disrespectful. They understand authority. And so they know what lines not to cross. No, they're not perfect. Yes, they break rules. Yes, they've gone a, a wrong direction at times, but we always reel them back in because of the standards we set early, the standards of character. You teach that. So that's number one, the teach. Okay, I'm teeing these up. I got three T's for you. Teach is verbal. Now, a lot of these will also be physical as well. Like a lot of these will overlap because you're teaching and doing at the same time. Like a lot of this stuff crosses over. But for the purposes of the outline, teach, verbal. Okay, those are the first one. To love Christ, standards of character, discipline, structure, and habits. You develop those habits early. They're a lot harder to break. They develop bad habits. Same goes for that. So we don't want them carrying those into life. We want them breaking the bad habits, developing the good habits, because that creates discipline. Second one, okay, on the T's is train. So we got teach and we got train. Train is physical. Train is actually putting hands to the plow. Train is actually feet on the ground, moving the needle, okay? We're actually exhibiting this behavior that we're teaching. We're actually watching them exhibit. We're actually watching them demonstrate some of the things that we have. Uh, it's like game film room, right? For football, you're watching film. Then you go on the field and you you practice what you were taught, what you saw, what you heard. You go out and execute. So the train is physical. It's be an example of strength, okay? That's for us as dads. Physical, spiritual, intellectual. Got to train muscles. Got to train. Got to do the right reps. Got to develop muscle memory, okay? Our brain is a muscle. You got to, as a dad, look, you got to exhibit and ex be an example of learning. Soak up information, okay? Flex the brain muscle. Get intellectual. Read. Learn. Expand your capacity for learning. Spiritual, of course, and physical. You got to be physically strong. You got to be physically capable. My kids grew up their whole life knowing dad was in the weight room five days a week. Their, their friends knew it. Their friends saw me out places and they would come home and tell me, golly, they said, you're dad, you're, you know, you're swole or dad, you're, you know, you're, you look like you can lift a lot of weight, blah, blah, blah. blah. That wasn't why I was doing it, obviously. But my kids understood that was just part of it. My way of life was that physical strength. It still is. I'm going on 51 years old, and my kids know physically I can handle myself. Physically, I can throw a lot of heavy weight around. No, I'm not Mr. Olympia, and I'm not trying to be. But that's the point is you set an example of that. Now, do all my kids go to the gym every day? No. Have they in the past? Yeah, they've, they've gotten in. They know what that looks like. Now it's on them. I've shown them. I was the example of it. I can't make them. So they'll eventually get to a place where they want that as a regular part of their life. Second one is be, is be an example of service. Okay, so we're training them now. Everything's physical. We're being the example. We're demonstrating the things we're teaching them verbally. I'm serving at church. Okay, serving you guys on the podcast. They all know that I do this. I've written books. They know that I'm doing that as a way to serve and encourage and equip. Um, you know, I, I just I feel like showing them that utilizing my gifts to serve other people is valuable and they can do the same thing. Looks differently for everybody. Although my, you know, one of my oldest who just got married, he's a teacher in public school and a baseball coach. He's serving our youth. My 21-year-old serving youth in church. He's a youth pastor. My 17-year-old son is musician. Okay, He's serving at church as a musician. My daughter is in leadership. Coming up, she's only 15, so she's learning from her older brothers, from us, on what leadership looks like. But she serves. She helps out at the church doing uh, logistics and planning and organizing and different things. She's going to be right there with them doing major stuff. I look look for major things from her uh, in the serving realm. And, and then be an example of resilience. They need to see us struggle. They need to see how we get back up. They need to see us fight through some things. They need to see that life isn't always easy, but yet we don't quit. So that's our example of training. Okay, we got to be that example. So that's physical. First T is teach. That's verbal. Second T is train. 
That's physical, right? That's the example. Be an example of strength, physically, spiritually, intellectually, service, resilience. Okay, the last T. Okay, I've teed these up. This is the last one, trust. So we got teach, train, and trust, guys. These might be pretty decent staples to live by. If you can dial these in and level up in certain areas, you can show up better than you ever have. And I still have a long way to go. I'm not perfect in these areas, but at least I've got them, got them on paper. At least I can see them, and I know that I'm dialed in on a lot of them. But the last one's trust. That's probably the hardest one because that's virtual. Okay, trust is just, it's it's that faith element. Okay, We're, we got to hold on loosely, but don't let go. And there I go again, Robin an 80s song from 38 Special. Hold on loosely, okay? Uh, you got to let them struggle and fail. I wasn't very good at that their whole life. Now I'm having to because they get older, they want that independence, so you just kind of have to give it to them. And uh, I'm watching from the stands, but... You're about to fall on your face, and I'm sort of giving you some hints, but you're not taking them. So when you fall down and, and bust your face on whatever that figuratively is, I'll be here to, to, to wipe it off and to tell you what you did wrong and, and help you move forward. And then practice fervent prayer. So these three elements under trust is hold on loosely, right? We Sometimes we got a clenched fist. We are white knuckling this parenting thing. I've done it for years. My wife has done it for years. We want to protect them. We want to give them the best, right? Always. We want to provide those solutions. We want to fix the problem. We want to save them the heartache. Can't do it. It doesn't prepare them. I wish I'd have implemented and executed better 20 years ago. You know, I wish we would have let them scrape the knee a little more often. Okay. Um, I don't know that. I mean, we had one broken bone, I think, in the whole family. A collarbone? Uh, that's not true. We had a baseball injury. Uh, my oldest broke his tibia and fibula. That was gruesome. But, you know, that was one of those things where we weren't, it's not like we let that happen. Um, but you have to deal with it when it does. So the trust part is don't hold on so tight, parents. Hold on loosely. You still have a firm grip. Okay. I was going to say a uh, baseball analogy is to swing hard and fast and quick. The misconception is, is that you squeeze the bat super hard. You death grip that sucker. The harder you want to swing, the harder you grip it. That's a lie. That's absolute opposite of truth. That The looser, now not super loose where you let go, but having control but yet loose grip. is. It's been proven in the data. The bat is quicker. You swing harder and quicker and faster with a moderate grip. So that's for you, whatever that analogy did for you. But as parents, we can still hold on without squeezing the life out of them and, and let them struggle and fail. Let them figure what that is because that goes back to the other, the be an example of the resilience. We got to let them experience that. We got to let them live resilience. But the only way to do that is to enable some struggle to put them in situations where they test themselves and maybe they fail. We got to put them there because life isn't going to feel sorry for them. Life's not going to swoop in and, and bandage the knee. Life's not going to give them any free passes. So neither should we. And that's one thing I really would have done different. Like I said, this last one was a little harder for me um, was this, this trust element, but it's faith too. God. I mean, God's given you these kids. They're not yours. You're stewarding, you're managing, you're training, you're teaching, you're loving, but ultimately they're his. So let's not pretend we made them and control the whole thing. And and then last one there, pra practice fervent prayer. That might be the most important one. Fervent prayer, aggressive prayer, okay? Steady, consistent prayer. Discipline in your prayer life for your kids. Sometimes that's all you can do because when they get to be a certain age, um, you can't make them do anything, really. When they're off the payroll, you really can't make them. Now, you can prevent them from doing some things, I guess, under your roof because you still are the man of the house, and when they're there, they'll they'll toe the line. But, man, when they're on their own and they're living their life, man, I can't make them do anything um, or not do anything. But I can pray. I can pray for them to have wisdom. Pray for them that the Holy Spirit would guide them in moments, um, would give them peace, about decisions they make. I can pray for that. 
And that's really the most powerful weapon we have because we live in a spiritual realm. And guys, we got an enemy coming after our kids, especially ones that are serving, ones that are doing good in the world, ones of character, ones that are growing close to God. The enemy wants them first. So we got to just, we got to give it to God. We got to pray and, and use those spiritual weapons in the spiritual battle. Guys, that's what parenting is about right there. I know you've heard countless parenting podcasts. I know there's countless parenting platforms and movements out there. Love it. Love the dad edge. Love different guys doing dad stuff. And I know that it may sometimes seem a little redundant to you, a little bit of overkill, but we can't ever know too much about being good dads. Being the dad like, we're trying to shoot for father, you know, uh, the God, the father, we're never going to get there, but he's the best example. And if we're going to try to be like him in his image, we got to take this thing seriously. And it's not going to all automatically happen. So guys, the full quiver, your kids, if you're not a dad yet, you will be, I'm sure soon. So this parent, this parenting advice isn't falling on deaf ears. I hope three parenting hacks for building quality humans. Like I said, guys, Teach them why and how they need to love God the Father. Build them to be people of impeccable integrity and character, and then teach them the importance of serving other people. Guys, the three T's, I teed them up for you. Teach, train, trust. Guys, share this. Email us at lastinlineleadership at gmail.com. I want to get a free resource to you about spiritual warfare. Got to be strategic. Got to be intentional. Got to be on the offense. Got to be aggressive with that. Uh, the enemy's coming for you, coming for me, coming for us. Guys, share it, rate it, review it. Thanks for being with us today. With that, be blessed.